Hi guys, um, look, I'm in the corner of my video. It's very exciting. Uh, I got a new camera, which is separate from my uh, tablet, so you guys don't have to stare at my nose. So I figure um, I'll leave myself down here in the corner so you can know it's me doing this stuff. I don't know. Uh, you can see my cool sushi cat poster that's in my office. Um, if you like cat crap, my office is full of it, so feel free to stop by and visit. Uh, in this video, we're going to go over this exercise here. Uh, this exercise, by the way, is also homework question number nine, which is insanely hard because I haven't really given you all the information and it has one trick to it. So um, I highly suggest trying it out on your own and seeing where we kind of get screwed. So if we read through this together, we look and see that our goal is to enforce at least 80% compliance with Click It or Ticket. So you want at least 80% compliance. A, no, a local newspaper reports that a roadblock resulted in 33 tickets to unbelted drivers out of 135 people stopped for inspection. So we're kind of skirting on the edges of not being okay for all of our uh, requirements. There's nothing here to say these people really stopped at random, um, but we can hopefully assume that the roadblock had some sort of randomization in there. Otherwise, we won't have our independence, which is part of our things we need. So we want to see, are the police achieving their goal at a particular significance level? So we're going to set up our hypothesis test. So here's the first place you run into problems for this question. Normally, we just look for a keyword telling us direction. Here, that keyword is at least. This is the first time we've had a keyword where our example or our actual keyword. Oh, God, I keep grabbing this giant pen. <laughs> where our keyword is a greater than or equal to or a less than or equal to. Every other time we've had a strict inequality with a greater than, a less than, or a not equal to. When we have the equal to there, we actually have to think about the fact that our equal sign has to go in our null hypothesis. So our null here is actually going to be that our P is greater than or equal to 80%. That has to be, and this is just a rule I hadn't told you. Since it has the equal sign, it has to go into our null hypothesis. So what the heck are we going to do for our alternative hypothesis then? Well, our alternative hypothesis is the opposite, right? When we're doing this hypothesis testing, we're doing two conflicting arguments. And what's funny is that in the previous example, I'm just going back to look at this one really quick, when we were looking at trying to prove that P was less than 4.09, technically, I mean, we could have had a greater than or equal to on the other alternatives. So that way they were really two opposite ideas. So either it's greater than or equal to 0 0.409 or it's less than 0 0.409. And the best case scenario for us here is a, a straight equal to. So it's sort of been there, just not drawn. Uh, and technically, we don't even really need to write the greater than or equal to in the null. The only thing we need to realize here is the opposite of being greater than or equal to is actually being less than. So here's the second way that this question is challenging. If you read through this quickly, like I tend to do because I'm lazy and don't like reading all the directions, um, you would see, okay, we have 33 tickets out of the total 135 people in the sample. And you would start doing your hypothesis test. So in this question, let me turn off tablet mode so I can bring up my emulator. Bah. Turn off tablet mode. Um, if you were to go ahead with those numbers and do a, the shortcut in here, so we do um, our test, one prop Z test. Ugh, I have to put it up for enter. And we've typed in everything. I don't have all of my calculator. This is a problem. And I don't know how to get it back. There it is, hooray. Um, 0.8 with an X of 33 and an N of 135. And we're looking here at a less than. I'm gonna go ahead and use the draw feature this time, which we showed you in class. So now, here's what we get. Maybe, there you go. That line is something in my Y equals. We get out a Z score of negative 16.1. This is not even on the screen for what we're trying to do. 
We this is crazier than our is there racial bias and jury selection in the South in the 50s and 60s example. This is a crazy Z. But the reason is is because we were being lazy and not reading carefully. Who were these 33 people? These were 33 people who got tickets. And what are we looking at? 80% compliance, people actually wearing their seatbelt. So in reality, this is an X. Our X would be all the people who were wearing their seatbelt, the other 102 people. So if we fix that in our calculator, let me clear out my Y equals so that we don't have that parabola in there. Uh, stat over tests. And we change this now to 102. This time I'm going to calculate. Now we get a P hat of 75.56%, which is much closer to the 80% we were comparing it to. And our Z score is actually something reasonable and our P value is something reasonable. So now our steps one, our two and three actually make sense. So step one, step two, our Z score according to that is a 1.29. No reason to give more, negative 1.29, more than two decimals for a z-score because the best you could look up in the table has two decimals. So standard convention is to just give two decimals for a z-score. Uh, three is our p-value with which our, with our little emulator is super easy, 0 0.0984. Remember, if you didn't have this, you'd be doing the steps by hand. So you'd be doing z is equal to our p hat minus our p naught all over the square root of p naught q naught divided by n. Our p hat would have been the 104 divided by that 135, which is 0.7556, minus our 0.8 all over 0.8 times 0.2 all over 135. Should have gotten the exact same thing back out. Now, if you don't have the calculator, the p-value, this is already negative. So what we're looking for, we said, what if compliance is actually 80%? What are the chances that we get out 75.56% compliance? Well, if that's the case, we want something more extreme. We would want to look up this z-score in the table as it is because we're looking for a left side and it's already negative. So we jump to our table and we go to look up negative 1.29, which is 0 0.0985. So you can see we have a, oops, that's not what I meant to do. We have a tiny bit of rounding difference. In the calculator, I have 8.4. In the table, I have 8.5. Either of those is acceptable, though. Step four is where we justify our decision and make a statistical decision. So remember, you need two parts to this. We need to compare our p-value, which was 0 0.0984, to whatever our significance level was, our probability of type 1 error, our acceptable amount of type 1 error. Uh, this was a 0 0.05. So we can see our p-value here, slightly larger, or almost twice as large as our significance level. And since our p-value is large, we are going to fail to reject the null. And this is when I put a sad face, because as statisticians, that's not what we're aiming for. We're aiming for rejecting or statistical significance. And so then step five, this gets a little bit funny as well. The reason this gets funny is because if we try to use that sort of shortcut method of looking at the end of this sentence, are the police achieving their goal? If we use that to write our sentence, we're going to get in trouble. So fail to reject the null. Remember this whole portion right here. All this tells us is whether or not we have enough evidence or not enough evidence. And since we failed to reject the null, we're going to say there is not enough evidence or there's insufficient evidence or there is not sufficient evidence, however you want to write it, to conclude that and here's where you would get in trouble if you write that the police are achieving their goal you are incorrect the reason is is because if you think about our two hypotheses here our null is that they're achieving their goal right they wanted at least 80 percent compliance so we can never prove that the police are achieving their goal even here when we fail to reject the null we can't say oh yeah they got their goal met 
the best we can say is, well, there's not evidence to show they didn't meet their goal. And here's where we get the idea that hypothesis testing is weird and evil. Uh, not evil, but it does have its limitations. And that's actually why almost every other example we've done so far doesn't have this wording of at least or at most because we can't truly prove at least or at most. So it doesn't make sense. So what we really want to conclude this is one of two ways. We could write it as conclude that the police are not achieving their goal. which seems weird and grammatically strange because we're saying it's not enough to say not, but whatever, that's, that's statistics for you. Or we think about this right alternative hypothesis in words. So we could say that the true proportion of drivers complying or just wearing their seatbelt, whatever wording you want to use, Oh, I'm going to write on my face. Oh, I didn't get there. Uh, is not equal to, oh no, is, sorry, less than 80% or 0.8, however you want to write it. So these are two different options. Option one is sort of like the wording of the sentence, but that could have gotten us in trouble in this particular question. Option two is just sticking with whatever the heck my alternative hypothesis says and putting that in there. So again, these two parts. The p-value piece, step four, just tells us whether or not we write not enough or enough. And then our alternative hypothesis is always how we're going to end this thing. All right. So hopefully that helps you with number nine. Um, it should, considering I did the whole question. Uh, we'll continue on with more examples if you want to watch them of hypothesis testing in the next videos.